Sorry if um, there's a small interruption. And yes, that that this desk is my satellite campus of Lancaster Uni. Thankfully, we are all a bit more back to normal now, so I do get to actually go and spend some time in my nice office. But for now, that's where we are. Sorry, she says tapping at the wrong screen. My role within the management school is as one of the undergraduate careers coaches. And I specialise in working with students who are majoring in either marketing or organisation work and technology. I have been in this job for quite a long time now, about nine years, I think now moving in. I am also a Lancaster grad myself. And my role as one of the careers coaches in the management school is as an industry specialist. So we have a model whereby we have uh, careers coaches, careers counsellors by trade who have uh, trained in that profession but also we have people who have come in from practice and I am one of those practitioners. The key thing however is that you're not going to be hearing from me the whole way through this. The most important people to talk to you about what you might do with a marketing degree are some of the people who have done a marketing degree with us and are now doing things with it. So you are going to hear from Ishani, from Andrew, from Savia, from Rebecca and from Angelica who are going to talk to you a little bit about their different roles in their different companies about why they chose marketing and kind of fundamentally why marketing matters. What I'm going to do is we're not I'm not going to kind of hand the floor over to them individually for 10 minutes at a time. We're going to kind of bounce back and forth a bit just to keep it lively. Make sure you're all still awake. So you will hear from them as we go along. We're going to talk a little bit this evening about what even is marketing and advertising? Those of you who did the masterclass uh, previous to this, it will be the most ridiculously simple definition of marketing and advertising. But I'm conscious that to kind of situate the conversation that you're going to hear, it's important that we kind of all have a, a working common definition. And then, yeah, we're going to teach you about, tell you about what a marketing degree will actually teach you, where you might end up with it, and why marketing kind of matters. So what is marketing and advertising? Well, my first question to you all, and I'd, again, I'd like you to be brave and get in the chat for me, is who are your favourite brands? What are your favourite brands? As individuals, as consumers, what do you like to buy? What are your favourite brands? I can see Rebecca's typing. That's jolly good. Tell me what your favourite brands are. Innocent Smoothies. OK, interesting. Rebecca, do you mind unmuting and telling me why? Yeah, I just love um, I love Innocent Smoothies. I love what they stand for. I love the whole campaign with AGK. I think that for saying they're such a fun and innovative brand, they managed to support this charity that actually specialises more in elderly people and not many brands could get away with that. And Tiffany, uh, we got a very expensive taste. Well, I, I spoke about this at work the other day. I have a necklace and it's got two little hearts. And I always think one's like my mum and my dad and I don't live in the same city as them. So more, Aww. not as materialistic as it as it sounds. Oh, that's really lovely. I'm going to just demonstrate my favourite brands and everybody's going to laugh because I'm a dinosaur, basically. And one of my favourite brands is Filofax because I'm a child of the 80s and I still use a pen and paper and I love pretty leather folders to keep myself organised which, <laughs> yay, Yashani, thank you for being the other person who appreciates those things. And I genuinely have one of those in every size, shape, colour. And I genuinely remember one of my first big purchases on my first proper pay packet was a proper Filofax, not just one of those cheap organisers from Paper Chase, but a branded leather Filofax. So the reason that I talk about this is because recognizing who you are as a consumer is one of the first ways we can start to get to grips with why marketing is interesting we really only have two decisions in life if we think about it is where we spend our time and where we spend our money and the more we think about our preferences and understand who we are as a consumer the more we start to get to grips with well actually isn't it interesting how Filofax has managed to keep me a loyal customer for a number of years so my next question is, what are your favourite campaigns? Tell me about your favourite campaigns. Which is the, the best ad you've ever seen? Whether that's a, a video ad you've seen through social media, whether it's an old fashioned ad on the telly, any of you major John Lewis fans at Christmas? Anybody seen anything out of home on a 
on a bus, on a bus stop. Talk to me, what are your favourite ads? Oh yeah, the Dracula ad, that was really clever. Those of you who don't know what that one is, it's worth sort of clicking on a, another tab and having a look at that one. The Honda, the car. Oh, yeah, I remember that one, Andrew. Oh, we're back with Innocent Smoothies again. I mean, I, I really like the Innocent Smoothie. Is it green? Is it blue? Discussion. So that's really useful. Now, <laughs> one of my favourite ads was this one, which stands out and won quite a lot of awards, actually. For those of you who don't remember this campaign, um, this came out when there was a chicken crisis for KFC. So essentially KFC had changed their supplier and their supply chain process and therefore they had problems up and down the country and had no chicken. And I think one of the reasons I love it, first of all, it's a print ad. Well, it's a still ad. So it was in newspapers, it was on bus stops and so on. So it's always nice to see something so attention grabbing that's not video. And I just think it's ace. It's like such a great example of the most simple play on their brand in a way that kind of highlights the humour of the situation, but is a genuine attempt to kind of say, sorry, we didn't have any chicken. The other one that I haven't got in here, actually, was the, does anyone remember the Tesco Christmas ad last year? And I'm sure we all remember Christmas last year, bearing in mind it was effectively cancelled. Every single ad campaign was all about families being separated and about kind of the trauma that we'd all experienced in 2020. And it was like heartstring pulling and everyone was like, you know, tearing up. And then came Tesco, who just completely took the mickey out of everything. And it was so refreshing in that landscape, in that context of all that emotion. It was so nice to laugh. So again, the reason I ask these questions are to kind of get a sense of how much are you guys paying attention to the the advertising context around you? How influenceable are you by ad campaigns? And just kind of what sort of things gets gets you kind of etched in your memory? So what is marketing and advertising? Well, fundamentally, mar sorry, marketing is about understanding the competitive marketplace. You know, what do you buy? What can you see? What can you get access to? Where do you buy it? How do you buy it? How much does it cost? OK, the essence of marketing is all about understanding people, what drives them to behave the way they do. Right. So it's not just about the campaign. The campaign is the thing at the end. The Tesco campaign is the thing that came at the end of there being this huge, great big piece of work looking at the insight into the psyche of Christmas shoppers in 2020 and what was really going to stand out against the competition. Advertising. Well, essentially, advertising is something used by all organisations, businesses, charities, celebrities, governments, universities to make themselves known, to get messages across. You know, arguably this is an advertising campaign. These masterclasses are basically to help us put Lancaster on the map. So not everybody lives in Lancaster. So, yeah, to put our university on the map shows you the benefits potentially conveys the messages that the brand want to get across. OK. So key question, really, why advertising and marketing? And this is where I'm going to start handing over to some of our alumni. So Ishani, this was your slide. Do you mind unmuting and cameraing camera on? Is there a verb for that to talk a little bit about why you chose to do a degree in marketing? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> Hello, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think this slide is when I was trying to think of what my answer should be. I think when people think about like careers, they think there should be this one big purpose and, you know, this one big thing that that you want to do and follow. And for me, actually, it was a variety of things. So I found it quite hard to like settle down on like one or two answers. So the first couple of things that I put on that slide was about the creativity. And so, um, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it, but that my current role is in a business to business environment. And when I was at university, I had this like illusion in my head that oh that's very technical it's very boring it's very you know professional almost whereas b2c is all about creativity like these campaigns that you're talking about but actually marketing to its core is so creative and is pushing me in so many different ways whether that's design work or sitting in meetings and brainstorming ideas and things like that and that's that's it essentially the creativity and i'm always on my toes and every day is so different so yeah it's very hard 
hard to get bored of. Um, another thing about marketing, which I think is really unique to this part of business, is that you can pick absolutely any industry that you want. Um, you know, my friends that I did the same degree with, they're in like completely different parts of marketing, uh, lots of different companies, different style of marketing, some in agencies, some working for companies and some freelancing. So, you know, if you think, oh, OK, is this for me? Probably if there's an area in your personal life, like hobbies and things that you like, if you're really into gaming, you could probably do marketing and gaming. You know, there's just so many possibilities with that. Or even if you know what exactly what you want to do, you turn 35 and you're bored of it, you could switch and you could do something else, you know. <laughs> um, so that that was the reason I chose marketing and that feeling of community that you get that in that industry and everything like that all tied together. It's really rewarding. Um, and, you know, I know I'm still quite new, you know, I'm still in the early stages of my career and I like it so far, so I wouldn't change <laughs> anything from it. And that's why I chose it. So thank you. Andrew, do you mind camera on ing? There's got to be a better way of saying that and telling me a bit about why you chose your marketing because you did marketing design, right? I did. Yeah. So I did a joint major in marketing and design. And, and to anyone who's, who's not aware of how that works at Lancaster, it means that essentially uh, on paper, half of your degree is spent at the like Institute of Contemporary Arts and the other half is spent at Lancaster University Management School, which is obviously where marketing is run. Um, and I think what's really interesting is for me in picking the choice of university, it, it was kind of keeping those options opening and open and not really shoehorning myself into one place. So there's some degrees that are really specific. And I think that's fantastic if you, you know, you really have that strong conviction that this is what you want to do. But I think for me, marketing and design was, as has just been said before, a really open space to get into. And as you said, said as well, it's multidisciplinary. You can find space for it anywhere. And I basically looked at my personal interests. Um, I did my A-levels in uh, graphic art, English literature and ICT. And I felt that this uh, marketing space and advertising as well was one of the few spaces in the world that you can combine all of those different interests into one. So if you do have those personal interests in photography or something or, or graphic art and graphic design, you can sort of bring that to degree to the degree as well, because there's a lot of creative uh, work in there, as well as the theoretical side of things, which are obviously kind of the cornerstone and foundation of what you do. So I felt it was the best way to go to kind of make of it what I wanted and, and specialise it in a way that I wanted it to be. Lovely, thank you. And then I think the next one I've got up is Angelica. Can you tell me a bit about why you chose it? Hi, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll walk you through my thinking process of why I chose to do marketing degree. Well, at first when I was at, um, at sixth form, I was just really mesmerized by all the ads that I saw, especially like Coca-Cola Christmas ads that stood out for me for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted, you know, to work in this creative industry, create this like really art. But then I realized that, I don't know if you have, met, if you have my next slide or not, I really realized the marketing, yeah, it's just everywhere. Literally every company needs a marketer or yeah, marketing. You you see it when you go on the street, when you're on public transport, in the bus, on the train, when you go on social media, when you listen to music on Spotify, when you watch films in the cinema or anywhere, yeah. Um, so I feel like it's a great skill to have because you will never end up being without a job and i think even during the pandemic times um marketing didn't suffer as much as other industries and people who are in marketing so yeah it's another great reason i think to to do this degree awesome thank you so we're going to get to it right now we're going to actually start to think about where you might head so let's start again here from some some of our other grads savia are you there can you start with this one for me? Yes. Um, so I graduated three years ago and kind of ended up where I didn't think I'd end up. Um, I left the university as a marketing and design graduate as well, just like Andrew. And I thought I would go into branding and all the big like video campaigns that you know, big brands are famous for like Nike and Adidas and Red Bull. Um, 
And then I got a job offer at an agency um, doing digital marketing. And here I am, not agency side anymore, but I do digital marketing in Sweaty Betty, which is the women's fitness wear brand, if anyone knows it. Um, and I've been here for nearly a year. Uh, so I started during the pandemic. I swapped jobs during the pandemic. So that kind of goes on the same thought process of there is always a job in marketing, even in pandemic times. Um, but yeah, it's been an exciting uh, whirlwind of information, especially with uh, how, how much digital marketing is growing. Um, it's it's definitely a lot, well, it's a lot of sat, being sat in front of a computer, but it's not as much as you'd expect. I thought that was the reason I didn't want to do it, but it's more creative and more practical than you might think. You can either be on the ad side where you're actually creating the ads, creating the copy, creating the content, or you can be on the analytical side where you're analyzing it, or you can do both, which is kind of what I do. Um, and then there are more and more partners where big, bigger brands can work with these partners to essentially grow their um, online sales. So yeah, lots, lots to learn from digital marketing. Fantastic. If anyone, like I say, if anyone has any questions for any of these folks as we go through, please pop it in the chat and they'll keep an eye on that. Thank you. Rebecca, can you go next? Yeah, of course. Hi. So I think, um, as has been mentioned, it can take you in all different directions. So um, for me, I did the marketing management degree program. So that incorporated a placement year, which I was lucky enough to do at Johnson & Johnson Vision. And I think that sums up who would have ever thought I would have marketed contact lenses for my placement year. But actually, it was the most amazing experience. Uh, marketing something that is one of the sensors as well you can't really see the product so you've got to think about a whole host of things around it and it was great because I got to do b2b so business to business marketing but also b2c marketing and to have an opportunity to mar market to both consumers and optometrists and opticians was great and then I still kind of realized that I wanted to go more into FMCG so fast moving consumer goods so things that are more flying off the shelves and then was lucky enough to land the the graduate scheme position in Johnson & Johnson Consumer where I'm currently working in the cough cold and allergy team so Sudafed, Benelin, Benadryl what a mouthful um, but to give you some hope as well within my team four of us are Lancaster University alumni which is great really so um that just shows you um, the opportunities that it can land. And that's just one team, never mind like Listerine team, Neutrogena team, et cetera. And um, within this role, I do e-commerce. So currently looking at Amazon and landing pages and what we can do for winter, because obviously we're in, in that season now for cough and cold. Um, and also carrying out a bit of an audit to see how we show up online. Um, that's really important to do, I think, when you start a new job. And then also professional, which is, probably something none of you think about really and certainly something I never thought about and that's more marketing to pharmacists because as much as we can drive consumers to stores but there's also we need to have that recommendation from a pharmacy so developing a strategy and I think it's been mentioned that that's one area but also I therefore work with loads of agencies on a day-to-day -day basis and that's another stream you can go in so uh, the world really is uh, your oyster. So can you just give me one example, Rebecca, of what have you done today? Oh, today's been uh, very, very busy, yeah, but I let me get my calendar up. So I had a bit of time this morning, so that was good. So yeah, just cool. some of my emails, my inbox is looking really good. This morning I only had one from Vicky. It was great. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> And then I actually attended a Future of E-commerce talk by one of our agencies, which was really insightful um, to just give you that broader perspective of where the, that type of industry is going. So whilst I'm in a brand team, I'm kind of specialising more in one maybe area of marketing. Then I had a catch up with my manager. So I just made a list of everything I needed to ask him and um, talk about budgets and if I can sign off things. Um, 
the responsibility I have is is quite good but sometimes it's a bit like I'm so new I only started in September my grad job because I only graduated this year and um, so then I had my lunch um, I packed my bags so I'm getting a train home after this um, there was a walk and talk session so we went uh, so the idea is at lunchtime every so often you can have a little walk and listen and that was all about blend and new starters and how to to cope with balancing your time um i had a check-in with my team and i i got a member of the team to talk me through a pharmacist day in the life because to understand more about that we don't have a field sales force anymore so we don't have people that go out into pharmacies so just to understand a little bit more that about that landscape because i'm still new and then I worked a bit on the pharmacy strategy and then I did a bit more on e-com and did some training that um, we've all got to do by Christmas and I haven't done any yet. So that was actually really insightful to learn more about um, banner ads. So, yeah, as you can see, cool. quite, a, quite a mixed day. Really, really mixed day. Nice one. And then you're finishing the day doing this for me. I'm really sorry. That's all right. I like doing it. <laughs> totally good. So, Ishani, can we come back to you? Can you tell us a bit about what you do every day? What your job is? Yeah, of course. And mine is, I feel like listening to everyone else speak is so different. Um, so good. the nature of, so I work for Oak Cosmetics and we're a supplier of natural oak derived ingredients. So to put into context, on one side, we work with farmers, so literally harvesting oats in Sweden. And on the other side, we work with the distributors. So they basically are like extended sales team across the world. So our biggest markets is like America um, and Europe. And they're like offices around and they basically sell to brands, brands that you may know of, uh, such as like L'Oreal, Liz Earl, Louis Vuitton Cosmetics. Um, funnily enough, Johnson & Johnson as, is one of our biggest customers. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a complex nature of marketing. So basically we are helping these brands put these cosmetic uh, products on the shelves, if that makes sense. So any of the design, so basically, I mean, I made a list here. So like design work is a big part of what I do, which is funny because I didn't do design at um, university. So this includes like, um, big sort of billboard size uh, posters. So I've, last week I created one that was used in an event in Los Angeles um, and then it will be used in the New York event. Um, I will never see it, but I made a poster that went up there. So that that kind of thing and then like sales presentations and things like that. Um, another aspect of my job is the sustainability. So we're an oat derived um, natural supplier. So that's really important to us. And I love that. And Vicky, I think you're aware of that, like sustainability was something I always felt really passionate about. So that's um, a lot of my work as well, like the communication side of it, how can we raise awareness, um, things like that. And then your usual things that you expect, like social media marketing, email marketing. Email is a big one, actually, because we work with professionals. So they, um, you know, we're checking emails every day. So that's a big way I, we market. And then the last few things is like events. So actually have an event in Coventry next week so going to a cosmetics live in <laughs> the dream in Coventry, yeah um uh, and then uh next year in April I'm going to Paris for a week so that's a slightly bigger one because L'Oreal is one of our bigger customers so you know the French market is booming in cosmetics and then a weird one which is working with chemists again like who would who would have thought so I did a level chemistry never thought I'd ever use it in my life and here I am working with chemists on creating formulations and basically I don't do the technical work I'll tell them right these are the trends like this is working really well this didn't work well and we work on like a collaborative way so it's a whole host of things um and yeah I mean like Rebecca said as well I think that the variety of marketing is just every day is so different so yeah that that's basically my role. Thank you. And we're going to go on to Angelica, I think, again now, who's at seven stars. Yeah, hi again. Um, so I work for seven stars, which is the uh, biggest independent media agency in the UK. And if you don't know, these are some of the brands that we work with, um, such as Iceland, H&M, Sony Music, Bang Bang Random House. And I'm actually working on entertainment accounts such as Sony music labels. Um, so, you know, artists such as Adele, Little Mix, who have album coming up tomorrow. Um, yeah, 
sign up for them, um, James Arthur, a lot of big names, and Penguin Random House uh, publishing, books publishing account. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm a planning executive, and what I do is I plan outdoor adverts, um, the ones you see outside, um, TV, radio ads, um, social media ads on YouTube, Twitter, uh, TikTok, everywhere really, um, ads on podcasts, so yeah, the whole bunch of stuff. Um, and what else do I do? Um, we do have, yeah, weekly meetings with our clients on which we discuss the briefs that they give us, we discuss the campaigns, um, it's quite interesting to meet them. I never met them in real life, unfortunately, because of COVID, but we do it, um, yeah, online. Um, I actually also set up social media campaigns myself sometimes. I'll show you some examples maybe later of them. Um, but yeah, you've seen them probably on Instagram, things like that. Uh, we do reports, we report on our campaigns, on the performance, um, which I find quite interesting. Um, and we do a lot of research as well. Um, this is prior to campaigns to plan them. For example, tomorrow I will do research for Adele. Um, you know, there is a special website to go there uh, which shows us information that people talk about Adele and your new album, new songs uh, on Twitter. Uh, can show the emotions that people have, sentiments, uh, memes. Yeah, it's quite, quite interesting. So quite a diverse role, I would say. That's my day-to-day -day job. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So basically, ladies and gents, next time you see, well, if you see anything around Little Mix being advertised on any of media to, from tomorrow, it will be Angelica that has put it there. Um, there also does seem to be one of your colleagues behind you who has a shark hat on his head, which um, is what's making me giggle. So if you, I, I don't know whether anybody yeah. else has spotted that. But yeah, that's not a plant from our part, just... So there's a man behind you with a shark on his head. Uh, it's a fun place to work, guys. I really recommend. Everybody's <laughs> really, really fun, honestly. Yeah, check it out. So um, I'm going to move on to Andrew, who I know for a fact is at home, so there won't be anybody behind him with a shark on his head, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually brought someone in this evening just to do that. Um, <sighs> yeah. The <laughs> we'll have to make a mental note of that, Michaela, that we need like comedy people in the background starting fights or wearing comedy outfits. Anyway, yeah, definitely. sorry. <laughs> Over to you. Tell us about your day today. Yeah, so I think um, I might be a bit of an outlier in this group in that um, my job title is a service designer. So naturally, you'd think that that uh, leans you know, massively towards the design part of my marketing and design degree. But surprisingly, and something that I learned while doing the degree is that there is such an interplay between these two disciplines and that, again, that because it's such an open platform, you really can make of it what you what you will. So as a service designer um, at the Office for National Statistics, um, you may be aware of them more than ever, I think, given everything that's had to be output from from COVID and things that have happened um, as a service designer in this organization. It's sort of about understanding how people interact with things, understanding their behavior um, and finding ways in which to either improve an experience that they, they go through um, or make something more appealing to them based on what they need. So to kind of put that into con context, particularly from a marketing perspective, simply uh, the process of ordering something off Amazon or what it's like when you go to an Apple store and all the products are laid out in a really beautiful way. Uh, so much of that is service design. So the way in which you understand how nice it is to go into that store of Apple and look at the different products that are there and, you know, do you have the genius people who are there to kind of help you? Um, and everything about that experience has been crafted by service and experience design. Um, and I think that's a really exciting thing to be able to do, to, to look at the end-to-end -end, uh, process that someone goes through. And that's both um, digital and in person. So even something, as I said, about Amazon, um, ordering something online, how easy is it for someone to do that and access what they need? You know, the quality of the images, the feeling that they get when they're doing that experience, all impacts ultimately on, on what people do. I think we see that more and more nowadays in that I like to use uh, cars and the auto industry as an example, in that kind of in the, the 80s and before, 
Um, something like a Skoda, for example, wouldn't have this great reliability image, but a Mercedes would. And the big thing that they'd market on is you know, the quality of the build and that it won't let you down. And what you find nowadays is that pretty much every single car does a fantastic job of getting you from A to B. They're really reliable. You know, they're really well made. They all look great. So what does a brand like Mercedes do to try and differentiate itself from Skoda or another brand from more economical cars? And a lot of that is in the experience that people are offered. So what it's like to be in that dealership, how easy it is to access online and get access to customer services. All of these different things make up a great service, which in a marketing perspective is often what you need to do to build the best, uh, you know, most interesting product. So applying that in the Office for National Statistics is slightly different in that we're civil service. And a lot of that can be to do with um, how easy it is for respondents to access a survey and how likely we are to get them to be a repeat respondent. So one of the examples I had when I first started at ONS in uh, August 2020, uh, we were doing a survey testing children in schools. And this is testing children from a very young age all the way through to, to um, college students. And one of the things that was really interesting was that sort of from a very statistical perspective, the question is, how can we get as many people tested as quickly as possible? And what we did is we came in as service designers was we thought, well, what's this experience like for children, um, the parents, the teachers, um, you know, is a nose and throat swab something that we can expect a teacher to administer? And we sort of asked those questions and outlined sort of those journeys that people go through and what that might be like for them. And we try and make that better. Um, and as a result of that, we can actually improve kind of statistical outputs from making an experience better in that if we give a child what's called a lollipop test, which is simply like a mouth swab um, instead of an ear, nose and throat swab, they're more likely to be willing to do it again. And therefore, you, you have better respondent rates at the end. So that's a huge part of what service design is about. And what I do every day can range from conducting research and facilitating sessions. So actually speaking to people and learning about what they need. Um, processing those sorts of things and also coming up with different ideas and presenting ways in which we could improve that service. Cool. I am happy. I should have brought it here, but I happen to be a recipient of a very nice um, shopping bag from the ONS this week to say, here's a gift for you. Would you please like to fill this out? So, you know, always want, to, always want to enjoy a freebie. What can I say? Service design is just bribery, it turns out. Well, <laughs> And certainly those of you who have on the call who've had terrible experiences of having tests and whatnot in school, it's not Andrew's fault. <laughs> it's been trying. So just to kind of get back on track a second, I just want to sort of summarise. And obviously we have heard a huge amount about what our grads are up to in different places. Fundamentally, what we would say that a marketing, advertising, marketing and design degree will teach you to do is to gather and make use of insight, understand how to communicate to different audiences in different ways. It'll teach you how to collaborate across cultures because if you don't know how to talk to different people about your product, you're not gonna effectively be able to persuade them to engage with it. It'll teach you how to manage projects, it'll teach you how to solve problems. And if you come to Lancaster to do a marketing degree, we have a huge programme called Marketing Me. So we will help you understand how to market yourself and get one of these fantastic jobs. So very small little plug in there from me. Before we finish, basically what I wanted to kind of get these guys to think about and to talk to you about as well. Sorry, Andrew, go on. No, it's OK. I was just going to say, I think um, I wanted to make a point on on that marketing me aspect of things. Um, we may touch upon that a little bit later, but yeah, I, I just remembered to mention that um, the career services at Lancaster. So what Vicky and, and the team that she works with offer is really invaluable. Um, so I used it throughout my time at university um, and it's one of those great opportunities where you're not necessarily just speaking about the academic work that's going on, and you know, trying to submit an essay in time you're kind of placed into the real world in that sense and that you can start talking about jobs on the outside and those opportunities that grow um at my first job out of university i actually got via vicky you know mentioning it and signposting it to me she knew that i was interested in the automotive industry and because of the connection she has she was able to kind of connect me with that that job application um and the thing as well as that is that it sort of it goes beyond your degree 
So, you know, even after you've graduated, it's not sort of as much as Vicky might want to at the end of it. <laughs> she can't, she, she doesn't just say, bye, good bye. luck, it's over now, you know, that's it. You know, th this service um, and the sort of support that we get as graduates is, I don't know if I'm misquoting, but it's kind of lifetime support in that you yeah. can always come back and speak to these people and, and learn. Yeah. So it might sound like I'm marketing now for, for Lancaster, but it really has been invaluable. And, you know, just the last few days I've been messaging Vicky about her, her jobs and careers and everything. So it's it's really good to have. Well, we do we do the whole lums for life thing because we need you guys to come and do this. <laughs> so to sort of finish, I, I wanted to kind of reflect a little bit on marketing and, and sort of what matters, because it's very easy to sit back and go, if I want to market cough medicine for a living, sorry, Rebecca, you just your face was on the screen there when I was talking about that. Obviously, cough medicine is probably something that's flying off the shelf this year. But actually thinking about the power of creativity and what marketing can bring to a career, what can bring to a brand, because fundamentally it's about influencing behaviour. So we can use the power of marketing and advertising to highlight socio-environmental issues. So I'm going to stop screen sharing for a minute. And I'm just going to ask all the alumni to put their cameras back on so we can sort of see everybody. And I'm just going to pop round everybody and ask you kind of for your favourite examples of kind of marketing at its best, doing something good, doing something effective. Savia, what, what about you? What, what kind of campaigns have you seen that you've loved that have really kind of been moving in a more than just buy more of me kind of scenario? I would say all of Nike's Just Do It campaigns. Um, I think that is the reason I left university wanting to go into marketing within the sports industry um, because of their, their campaigns and their, their, their ability to use marketing to touch upon more like political or controversial um, situations but staying relevant at the same time um, yes. so yeah I love Nike's advertisements and I can only hope that Sweaty Betty manages to do the same one day. Absolutely. Rebecca what about you? Um, I think going down that kind of charity sustainable this sustainability route I think one from from J and J's Calpol's um work with the NSPCC I think that's a really nice has really nice synergies um and giving back and donating uh, on the sale of their products something that's not just um you know at, at the root of of selling more but but giving back I think that's really nice and also another BBC example so I shared the Dracula one um earlier I'll share another one which was all about can't remember the exact um, details, but I have I have a link in front of me, and it was all about a perfect planet, and they quite literally like set this billboard on fire and trying to make kind of in the out of home space uh, a real impact. Super, Andrew. This is uh, the most embarrassing thing that I'm essentially drawing a blank trying to think of the most profound advertising I've seen. Um, more embarrassing than talking about Filofax to a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> no, I, I think it's I think it's difficult because I think um, some of the some of the advertisement we see now is it, it, it's become such a common thing that we see of, of that social responsibility, and I, I think that's a great thing. And what it does is it makes it really hard to pick any one. So I think I suppose for me one of the things that I think would be a great example uh, is uh, Brewdog, for example, where they've sort of done a really great method of, of being almost anti-marketing, but in the process playing the marketing game and understanding the rules of how it works, but in the same sense being uh, minded about corporate social responsibility. So again, a lot of the products that they sell are actually rooted in sustainability and that almost whether you see the advertisement or not, you are also contributing to environmental sustainability by doing that. You know, the can itself can be an advertisement and in many ways you know Brewdog have shied away from doing proper ad, proper ads um, but at the same time that draws more attention to them and I think that people now are so conscious of um, kind of empty gestures of sustainability and responsibility that cutting through that is one of the best ways that you can do it and it's a great example of marketing 
by being aware of some of the tropes of marketing. So it's quite very meta. You're muted, Vicky. <laughs> I haven't done that for ages. That sounds very grown up, Andrew. I'm well impressed. Um, Ishani, what about you? I've got a couple of slides that you so you've actually sent me some examples. So let me just share my screen again. Yeah, I just wanted to say before you get to that, actually, on Andrew's point, we um, actually learned about this in the third year of my marketing degree about anti branding. And it was one of my favorite. It was Sir James Crony, he's my favorite lecturer. Um, and it was all about that, keeping up with the marketing trends by being anti marketing. And you learn that's the thing about Lancaster degrees. It's so like, I'm really selling it here, Vicky, but I'm being genuine. It's just, <laughs> yeah, you learn all about these sort of like little tropes. Um, so the ones I picked being from the cosmetics industry. So this one was actually followed up from the, um, the murder case, actually, with Sarah Everard. Um, L'Oreal um, almost as a reaction because all these stories came up about uh, women's safety, just people, you know, girls walking um, in the dark and things like that. So they did a stand up against street crime and harassment campaign where they taught um, through just like a couple of videos. It was like a video series um, of what to do if you're ever in that situation. And it's something so simple in, and based on information and educational. But I just thought that was really powerful. You know, they have this massive platform and followers and, you know, they've done that. And that, you know, essentially is what marketing is all about, connecting with people with things they understand. Um, so, yeah, that was one of my um, examples. And the other one, I, also, I think I sent it to you, the Glossier. This one I loved because I think the whole again what you said earlier about the um, sociocultural um, and general like um, images and messages that we have in society are created by marketers. So if you're working in that industry, you have an influence over what those messages are. And Glossier here have done a fantastic job of that, where they basically um, uh, focused on uh, women in sports um, and how they're seen in seen as unfeminine and not beautiful, but they highlight their unbeautiful or whatever the opposite of that is um, as beauty. And I just loved that. It was just so great. Um, and yeah, again, and one of those things, just simple videos, people speaking and um, images um, and yeah, just really powerful. Thank you. And then Angelica, I've got this one from you. Is there any, do you want to talk about this one or any other ones? Yeah, yeah, no, this one actually is perfect. So um, I just wanted to share something that we actually did in our team. So uh, during Euro 2020 this year, this summer, um, we did this advert. So on Sony Music, they have this song called Three Lions. I don't know, maybe, uh, people who are into football will probably know it. Um, so yeah, in order to kind of promote this song, but also um, be, yeah, up to up to speed with all the football stuff and euros happening. Uh, we did a massive projection of some video content uh, on uh, White Cliffs in Devon uh, this summer. And it was showing, um, yeah, footballers, um, was really giving the support to the English team. Uh, and it was also playing like the three line song out, li out loud. Um, yeah, I think it was, um, it, it was a great, great campaign and we got a lot of social media buzz and recognition afterwards because obviously not many people could see it live uh, on the white clips but um yeah it got a lot of um yeah social media buzz in the end i do think it's something different absolutely i could talk about this subject with you guys for ages i'm going to skip my examples because we're running out of time so i just want to kind of sum up really and sort of say for those of you on the on the line still with us, if you have any fancy for marketing, a marketing career, a marketing degree, start to think about who you are as a consumer. Watch where you spend your time and money. Who's keeping your attention? Who's persuading you to change your habits? Who is getting messages out there that's actually kind of making you stop and think differently? Certainly at the moment, you know, in the land of COP26, you know, what are we seeing that actually is genuinely kind of having an impact on our behaviours? Think about your favourite brands, you know, what are they doing? Are they doing good things? Are they not doing anything? Are they doing things that actually are making you a bit cross? The more that you understand about 
your behaviours as a consumer, the more you'll start to understand about marketing. And it's not just about the fun stuff. So obviously, when we talked about favourite brands, we talked about, you know, PlayStation and Filofax and Tiffany, you know, actually pay attention to, you know, what what comes in the house at home, you know, like what, what bread do we buy? What toothpaste comes in the house? Where do people shop in your family and so on? Because the, the more we understand about our behaviours as a consumer, the more we're going to start to get to grips with, oh, actually, that's somebody's managed to persuade me to buy that. And that was a marketer somewhere along the line. Or when you walk in a store, as Andrew said, somebody potentially has designed that experience or not, as the case may be, depending on where we're talking about. So think about yourself as a, a consumer. Do watch ads. If you have any interest in going into marketing, don't skip the ads. OK, however rubbish they may be because it's always good to look at an ad and go that's rubbish well why was it rubbish don't don't also be tempted to kind of always watch Netflix you know do get on some live telly actually watch the ads in live telly why is that ad on at this time on this channel why is this ad on a bus stop why is this ad on a billboard Try and, you know, spend a little bit of time walking around without staring at your phone or plugged in and pay attention to the the world that is trying to capture your attention. OK, it's a very crowded space, but the more you understand about where things are and what things are designed to do and what we're trying to get you to spend your money on, spend more money, spend your money differently. This is fundamentally marketing. And do think about where you see social issues that are being dealt with or badly dealt with through marketing campaigns. And then finally, you know, if, you've, if you're really up for it, keep an eye on things like Marketing Week and Ad Week and campaign websites. And ideally, apply to Lancaster because, you know, that's clearly where it's at.